So recently I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys on Twitter and Twitch to check out Jawa.gg, which if you don't know, it's a website that's more or less a marketplace for PC and gaming gear. And some of it's new, some of it's brand new in the box, but I've actually never used this website before. I just keep hearing about it. You guys keep telling me to make some content around it. So today I figured it might be kind of interesting to just go through the website and see if we can part out a reasonable build for a reasonable price. Uh, if we can't, then I'm not gonna purchase anything and I'll deem this website a failure and tell you all to, to never use it. But if we can actually put together something reasonable, then I will actually add everything to my cart, buy it, and I will build the PC at a later date when all the parts arrive. Assuming that I don't get screwed over by one of the sellers or if one of the parts comes in bad or DOA or if it's not as advertised, that'll also be good information to share with you guys just to let you know what the risks are of using this website. Again, never used it before in my life. This is not sponsored in any way by Java or anyone else uh, apart from the, the pre-roll or whatever if there's a pre-roll in this video. Um, but uh, I've never even spoken to anyone at Java before. I just keep hearing about it. So, so I thought this might be a relevant video for any of you who are looking to use this website in the future. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by cdkeyoffers.com, a one-stop shop for reliable gaming software keys. Right now, they're offering 20% off Windows 10 Pro OEM keys when you enter promo code BW20 at checkout. Getting your key is easy. Once you've added it to your cart, enter promo code BW20, fill out your payment info, and complete the purchase before heading to your purchased orders page to view and copy your new key. Simply paste it into the Windows activation page and voila, your operating system is fully authenticated. To grab your discounted Windows 10 Pro key now, click on the link in the description below. So let's just dive right in, shall we? We're already here at the homepage, java.gg. UI looks fairly simple, relatively clean. Who are these people? Okay, these are just random random YouTubers. I'm not on there, it's probably for the best. Uh, okay, um, why don't we just start with, okay, hold on, first of all, what kind of PC do I wanna build right now? I think going in the middle of the road, maybe like a mid to high range build, mid to high end build. So anywhere between 1400, we'll try to keep the budget anywhere between 1400 and 1600 with like 1500 being the sort of average that we're shooting for. Let's see if we can pull that off. Uh, I'm gonna start with CPUs. Um, it'll also be interesting to see what kind of availability uh, we get for various parts. So it looks like I'm gonna sort by lowest. Okay, at the very bottom of the barrel, we've got a $4 Intel Core 2 Duo, all right. Um, probably need something a bit more high-end than that. Slightly used Core i3. I want at least like an i5 or an i7 or a Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, if not higher, depending on the prices. So 105 bucks for a Core i5, 10400. 8700 for 125 bucks. That's a little bit too old of a processor, I think. Hundred and seventy bucks for a Core i7 10700F. It's not overclockable, but it's a pretty reasonable price. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. That's a APU 5700G. So meh. Uh, Ryzen 9 3900X for three hundred dollars. Really? Or 12700K for three fifty. All right, now we're talking. And on the higher end, it looks like we've got. Uh, okay, these are like combos, motherboards, and CPUs. 9900KF and a Z390E gaming combo for five fifty. It's it's a decent deal, it's not fantastic. 3900X for $300. This chip is still going for like over 500, I, I think, like on Amazon and stuff. Let's see, usage, less than a year. And it's hard, you know, that's the thing with a secondhand market. You don't know if, if this guy's had it for a year or for or for two. If he's overclocked the crap out of it, that's one of the risks you take with uh, the secondhand market. But let's take a look here. This is the first processor that I used to make content before I was aware of GPU encoding. This CPU will handle anything you throw at it in terms of editing. It also decent for gaming all around. It's an excellent processor for something. Okay, blah, 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 blah. 12 cores, 12 cores and 24 threads for 300 bucks. It's not bad. Let's take a look at this 12700K. This is eight cores and 16 threads on LGA 1700, factory sealed, factory sealed. So this is, okay, that's that's a pretty good trade-off. You know, it's, it's a bit more expensive and not as many cores as the uh, 3900X, but it is brand new in the box. That, there's something to be said there. And then we have the 3950X for 420. Used it for about a year until I upgraded to a 5950X. It's been sitting in the box on the shelf in my office since I bought a newer 16 core CPU. Oh, okay. I have a feeling if we went with the 3950X, it would be at $420. While that's a great deal for the CPU, even used, 
I think it would still cut into our $1,500 budget a little too much. So I'm leaning more towards the other two options that we have here. Plus, if this is a gaming focused build, which I should have mentioned earlier, I think we just want this to be a straight up gaming PC. We don't really need 16 cores. Uh, in fact, either this 12700K or the 3900X would be plenty for uh, gaming and streaming if you wanted to do, uh, if you wanted to dabble with both. Which one though? $350 for a brand new 12700K or $300 for a used 3900X. I wanna verify what these CPUs are currently going for on Amazon, brand new. So $520 right now for the Ryzen 9 3900X. That's a crazy savings. And then 12700K is $375, $375. So actually, this isn't much of a deal. If you can just get one of these for you know, $20, $25 more, um, still brand new. This, this just seems too good to be true, which makes me even more curious to just buy it and see what happens. So let's, let's go for this. Let's do a Ryzen based system. That is the platform that we're going with here. So let's just see what kind of motherboard options we have that are compatible with uh, the 3900X. Um, broken, broken, uh, a lot of broken boards. ASRock B450 Pro 4 for $60. Eee! Pretty damn cheap, but it's B450. I think I'd want at least B550, if not X570, but that might be shooting for the moon a little bit too much here on this website. A barely used MSI X570A Pro for $110. $110 for a used X570 board? That's not too bad. That's really not too bad. Used for a year? Oh, used, used for three months in excellent condition. Comes with everything included. Hmm. Okay, another X570 board, but for $145. And then it just shoots up from there, $250 up. Not paying $250 for a motherboard on this build. So, okay, let's just, uh, let's go with this one. I think this is the best option. Seems like the cheapest board we can get for X570, even though it's used. Let's roll the dice. What do we want next? How about memory? 110 listings. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's a really sophisticated search on this website. So, like I can't search by RAM capacity or speed or uh, anything like that. So that's kind of a bummer. Hopefully they add that in the future. But what do we got here? Um, some pretty old DDR3 modules. That's not gonna work. We need DDR4. And I want at least 16 gigs in this system. $80 for 32, oh, listing paused. Oh, this would have been a good kit. DDR4, what speed is this? 3600 speed for 32 gigs. Rip Jaws, Rip Jaws 5, $80. That would have been a great deal. Why is it paused? Unpause, can I unpause it? Fine, moving on. And then, oh wait, these are all sold. All the rest are sold. Sold, sold, sold. Oh no, what the heck? Okay, so our 110 listings is more like a dozen, a dozen or two, if that. Um, well, geez, these options kind of suck. Not gonna lie. I'm not gonna just use an eight gig dim. Like this, this is actually a good quality kit, but it's only eight gigs. One available. Yeah, that's not gonna work for me. Okay, so right off the bat, this is something to be, uh, noted with Java is that availability isn't the strongest in certain categories. It was okay for CPUs and uh, motherboards was, was even stronger, but um, memory seems to be, there seems to be a dearth of options in the memory department. I think for any of the categories where there's just not any viable options, I'm just gonna buy it on Amazon. All right, I just searched for 16 gigs, a dual channel kit of DDR4 and uh, let's see, team group, Oli, it was only 3000 speed, I'd like 32 at least. $68 for Corsair Vengeance LPX, $64 for Rift Jaws 5, and this is 3600 speed. It's actually a couple dollars cheaper than the 3200 speed kit. Interesting. Okay, I think I've made my choice. I'm gonna go with this guy. One thing I'll mention here, sort of a side note, is that if you are building a PC in this day and age and you are looking to game and stream with it and you're, you're typically playing a lot of AAA titles, then I would suggest at least 32 gigs nowadays just because there are a lot of games that eat up tons of RAM and when you're streaming on top of that, I've definitely hit a wall multiple times with only having 16 gigs in my system. So uh, that's just something to be aware of since this is strictly a gaming PC for all intents and purposes, this'll do. I'm gonna just uh, leave this here, toss it off to the side. Hopefully that's the only component that we have to resort to Amazon for, and we can find the rest of our stuff here on Jawa, but let's continue. I wanna do CPU cooler next? CPU cooler, oh, only 38 listings. Oh my God, there's only like eight options, eight or nine options here. Oh no, okay. Um, $200 cool, no thank you. Stock cooler, there's a 360 millimeter AIO for 160, not exactly the deal I was looking for. A Thermaltake Tough Liquid 240 AIO for $65. Master Liquid ML, oh, 
I swore off Cooler Master AIOs a long time ago. Their mounting system's horrible. But it's only $60. Since there's so limited options, we'll just open that one up and entertain the idea for now. A 360 millimeter AIO from EBGA for $75. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Knocked to an NHD 15 for 80. I don't know, that's a really good cooler and that's a good price for it, but I don't know. Going for a 240 AIO with just $65 seems like a better deal to me. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the CLCs. Let's take a look. This does not include an LJ1700 bracket. That's not a problem. I believe this does support AM4, if you look here. Yes, AM4, boom, that's good. All right, so this is an option, contender. We have the master liquid. Okay, I'm pretty sure this supports AM4. I'm pretty sure all these support AM4. So here's an option two. Again, I'm inclined to go with the thermal take before the Cooler Master one due to the mounting bracket being horrible. And then we also have the EBGA 360. So we could do a three, mm, problem with the 360 rad is that it'll limit the case options. I haven't, we haven't looked at cases yet, obviously, but going from a 240 to a 360, is definitely going to be a compromise in terms of case compatibility. And I don't know what kind of options they have for chassis on this website just yet. This is also $15 more than the thermal take cooler. I'm gonna eliminate the, uh, the Cooler Master one for now. How about this? Before I choose an AAO, let me just take a look at the cases. And that might help us narrow down what cooler we wanna use. 22 listings, oh no. Yikes, yeah, so availability is pretty limited on this website. It's probably just because it's a newer site uh, or just not super well known. Um, but what do we have here? Wow, these are all expansive. We got a couple $60 cases, a black DLM 22 micro ATX case from, oh, this is Dark Flash. This is a Dark Flash case, Dark Flash. This looks like a hot box. I mean, just look at the front panel. Eesh. Where does it get its intake from? The side? Probably the side. Honestly, at $60, this probably isn't even a deal. That's probably about how much it costs new on Amazon or wherever. Um, and then we have this Fractal Design Define 7. Define 7 for 60 bucks. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. This case is usually around $130, $140. $60, use less than three months. Is that, is that like, why, why, why does everyone say that all their components are used less than three months? That seems like the the cop-out answer. Uh, comes with case manual as well as original screws and accessories, ships in the case box, or ships in the case box with the original packaging to ensure glass side panels safe, blah, blah, blah. Currently two 140 millimeter fractal fans in the front that came with the case. I gotta say this is a pretty good deal. Shipping is $20 though. So really you're paying 80. That's still notably less than what you'd pay for this case new. Uh, and I mean, honestly, if we're looking at the other options, there really aren't any other good ones. I think these are all too expensive for what they are, these, these first three. And plus you have to pay shipping on them, I'm sure. Yeah, $26. This is even more in shipping. No, okay. All right, I was really hoping for better case options, but the Define 7 is a decent chassis and this is, this is like a really good deal for it, if I'm being honest, so. Also, we now know what kind of cooler we can fit in here. So we could theoretically fit a 360 in here. I believe you can do 360 rad mounting at the front or the top in this case, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but oh, that means we could use the EVGA 360 rad for $75, or we could still just revert to the cheaper 240 AIO from Thermal Take. $10 cheaper. We do have a 3900X in there. 3900X, and let's say, you know, practically speaking, if, you know, I was really building the system and I was thinking about upgrades down the line, I'd be putting in a faster, possibly hotter running CPU in the future. So I kind of want to just account for that and maybe 360 millimeter is the safer route to go, especially since it's only $10 more than the 240 rad. And our case fits it, so we're doing it. Let's do storage next. I'm gonna save GPU for last, if you couldn't tell. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by the Corsair K70 RGB Pro. It features Axon hyper-processing technology for lightning-fast inputs, linear mechanical switches, PBT double-shot pro keycaps, IQ integration, and more. For more info on the Corsair K70 RGB Pro, click the link in the description below. All right, so these listings are paused, so those are no-goes. Those are mostly hard drives anyway. We've got a $30 WD SN520. This is an NVMe drive. It's only 250 gigs though. Bummer, so that was this one. The Samsung 980 500 gig SSD for $60. That's not bad. We have a 970 Evo Plus 500 gig NVMe drive for $60. That's not bad. And then uh, this is too expensive. Although it's probably, oh, it's two terabyte for 160. It's $195 on Amazon new. And this is also new in box for 150 bucks. So we're saving almost $50 here with this drive. And you're getting twice the amount, cause I was thinking, I was already thinking if we got this SSD and like both Samsung drives, 
that'd be a terabyte, which is solid for a gaming PC, for $120. But you're also kind of, you got this weird configuration going on with your storage because now you have two drives instead of just one. It's not quite as elegant of a solution. I'd much rather have one larger capacity drive. All right, so do I go with the single two terabyte SX8200 Pro or do I go with two 500 gig Samsung NVMe drives? Um, and the SX8200 Pro is NVMe as well. It's Gen 3, PCI Gen 3 by four. What, oh, shipping costs. That's that's one thing I, I should be looking at closer here. $9.16 to ship that SSD versus ooh, $10 on that drive and $10 on the other drive. I'd be paying twice as much in shipping by going with both of these SSDs, uh, that would be that, that would mean I'd only be saving about 20 bucks if I went with the two Samsung drives, which for half the capacity, I don't think it's worth it. So I'm gonna go with the XPG. Wait, oh no, it's paused. It's paused. Why, why do they even list? Why do they even show freaking paused listings? Is there a way to not show those, make them invisible so I don't get confused because I'm dumb and can't read? Ah, that's annoying. That's really annoying. These are, the two Samsung drives are available. Oh, there's four available. There's four available. Why don't I just get two of these then? That way, maybe shipping costs will be less. Yeah? Where's the quantity? How do I choose two? Two, I want two. There's no quantity. Am I missing something here? Uh, maybe I just gotta add to cart and then it'll let me change the quantity after. No. It says four available. Why can't I add a second one to my cart? And now it's grayed out. I can't just F5, refresh. No! I'm actually gonna message them about this. This will be a good test to see how their customer service is, customer support. It is 517 right now. Let's see how long it takes them to get back to me. I have to give them my email address so that they can reach me through there if they need to. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and add this other Samsung drive, this 980, 500 gig drive, five available in there. Uh, also no option to add more than one to cart. Maybe it's like a seller thing, like the seller d decided that uh, only one per customer or something. I don't know, whatever. Okay, so we've got one terabyte of storage in the system right now. Dearth of options for SSDs. I wish there was more on this site. Okay, moving on to power supplies. Okay, let's see, we have a 3900X and if I'm gonna shoot for like an RTX 3060 Ti or a 3070, maybe a 3070 Ti, somewhere in that range. So we're gonna want at least like either a highly rated 600 watt power supply or preferably 650 watts, just to be safe. 650 watt unit from EBGA, non-modular, $50. This doesn't even look like it's 80 plus certified though. Usually they plaster that badge all over the front if it is. No, nah, this is not 80 plus listed nowhere. This is probably what, 75% efficiency? Uh-uh, no. 550 watt, 550 watt, 550 watt, a lot of 550 watt. Oh, this is 1,050 watts. A 1,050 watt unit, 80 plus gold for $55. Rosewell Photon, I'm gonna open that tab. And again, not many options with power supplies here. So these are all sold, sold, sold. <sighs> this listing is for a pre-owned Rosewell Photon 1,050 watt power supply. I was the second owner and only used it a few times in a server build that I decided to disassemble. Power supply works completely fine, runs well and quiet. We'll come with these connectors. Okay, let's make sure the connectors are here. 24 pin, eight pin for the CPU, four eight pin GPU. That's good. And three SATA Molex cables. That's everything we would need. Uh, as seen in photos, there is a sizable dent in the back of the unit. This does not affect performance, but does prevent one screw hole from being able to be reached when the unit is used in a case. Where's this dent? Where's this dent? Oh, Jesus. Jeez Louise. What the frick did you do? Who Hulk smashed your power supply? Good Lord, man. That's, that's crazy. Oh, here's another close up look at the dent. <sighs> I see what he's saying. So one of the screw holes cannot be threaded because the dent is keeping it from becoming, uh, being super flush with the back of the case. Um, I don't think that's a huge deal. You know, cosmetically it looks not great, but functionally speaking, it's, it still works, uh, according to him, just fine. And you know, if you're getting three screws in there, three out of four, three out of four ain't bad, you know? It's not like I'm taking this PC on a roller coaster with me. You know, um, I think three, three screws should be fine. And that's just a hell of a deal. Obviously 1,050 watts is complete overkill for the build we're putting together, but this is really the best deal by far out of everything else that's available. You know what, let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. It's $12 for shipping. It's still a ridiculous deal for a thousand watt unit. Doing it, it'll also be interesting to see what kind of shape it's in when it shows up, if the dent is as advertised or if we have any other issues with it. Um, hopefully not, hopefully not, but 80 plus gold and all that, yeah.
And the last piece to our puzzle for this PC is a graphics card. I feel like there's either gonna be a ton of options or zero options. Wait, 365 listings? Okay, but how many of them are sold? And what kind of prices are we gonna see? It's already sorted by lowest price. Okay, these are all pretty weak, weaklings. GTX 1060s. Okay, RTX 30, oh, hold on, hold on here. RTX 3050 for 379, that's actually not terrible. Okay. RTX 2060, $400. RTX 2070 for 450. 3060, RTX 3060 is for around 450, 450 bucks. An RTX 3070 Gaming Z Trio for 650. Another 3070 for $700. There's a 3070 Ti for almost $800. That's notably more expensive than the $650 3070. Yeah, it's gonna be a little faster, but I don't know. 150 bucks for a, for a Ti. Um, RTX 2080 Ti for 800, no. 3070 Ti, 825, no, no. And they just keep going up. Um, RTX 3090, 1470, that's our whole budget right there. Like GPU prices are definitely, they've definitely come down in the last few months. And it seems like they're just continuing to follow that trend. I hope it just continues um, all the way up until we see the launches of uh, the new 4000 series from NVIDIA and uh, any new GPUs that AMD might be coming out with. And the vast majority of the remaining listings are sold. So I think this guy is our best bet. In excellent condition, shipping insurance provided, bought new card in March, still under MSI warranty, only used for gaming. That's what they all say. Uh, great card for 1440p gaming, cleaned and ready to ship, shoot fair offers. Hmm. <laughs> Did I see any deals that were comparable to that one for 3070? This would be the only other one. I think. Let's take a look. Open to place in the build and benchmark since it needed a display output. No issues whatsoever with the card and we'll be providing free shipping with it. Free shipping. Wait, shipping says $10. He says free shipping here. Which one is it? How much is the shipping for the MSI card? Free shipping. Ah ha ha. This actually says free shipping, unlike the other post. I'm doing it fam. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, doing it. Yeah. And honestly, I would build the system differently if I was buying all the parts new from like Amazon or something, because I, I would allocate more for a gaming build like this is, I would allocate more budget towards the graphics card than the CPU. I wouldn't pair an RTX 3070 with a Ryzen 9 3900X. But in this case, we found the 3900X for $300, which is about the price I would pay for a GPU that I think would fit well with an RTX 3070. Something like, uh, you know, a Ryzen 7, 5800X, right? Um, or the equivalent of that on the Intel side. So uh, we just got a killer deal on that 3900X, um, but in a normal build, uh, it would be a little weird. Um, all right, those are all of our parts. What does it come out to? Oh, we gotta add the RAM too. Gotta add the RAM. And I'm including like tax and shipping as well. I wanna be as fair as possible here. So let me go ahead and, okay, I just calculated the tax for the RAM and it comes out to 68.64, $68.64. Total here is 14.60.21. So I'm gonna add that to the cost of the RAM, 14.60.21, that is including shipping. Shipping is $90.21. That comes out to, wow, we're right within our budget, $1,528.85. So about 1,530 bucks, 1,530 bucks. Oh, and there's no tax on Jawa because it's all secondhand. These are all secondhand sellers. So there's no tax. That's nice. How nice. I forgot about that perk. So in a way you're really trading off shipping costs for taxes. Although that may not apply for those of you who live in states with zero sales tax or really low uh, sales tax. I'm in California, so we get we get freaking wrecked on that. Uh, so this is a huge deal for me. I'm actually curious now. So at $1,530, what would this build cost if we bought all the parts new on Amazon, including shipping and taxes? Let me go ahead and add that up really quick. All right, I just added up all the parts on Amazon and I was able to get all the exact same components as our Jawa build, except for one because it is no longer in production and cannot be purchased on websites like Amazon anymore. That was the power supply. So I did go with something uh, very similar as a Rosewell PMG, also 1050 watts, 80 plus gold. This seems to be like the successor, um, you know, new generation of the one that we have in the Jawa build. And uh, that was pretty much it. Everything else we were able to replicate to a T. But adding up all the new parts on Amazon, our total came out to $2,230.63. 2,200 bucks versus 1,500. That is a 46% price hike, purchasing all of the parts on Amazon. Um, that's, that's a lot more expensive. Obviously you're getting 
all new parts and they all are guaranteed to have manufacturer's warranties on them. But that is a lot, there's a lot more money. There's a lot more moolah. I think we're, sa we're saving what about six, seven, seven hundred dollars? Saving about seven hundred dollars going on Java. So I guess if you want to save money, uh, Java seems to be a good option. But I can't yet firmly recommend this website or using it in any way until I actually receive the parts and check the quality and the authenticity of the listings, um, which we will do in a follow-up video because yes, I've decided that I'm going to purchase all the parts that I just added to my cart in Java and we'll just see what happens in part two if and when they arrive. In a way, I'm kind of hoping that at least one part comes screwed up or damaged or not as advertised in some way because then it would give us an opportunity to test out, once again, the customer service, customer support of Jawa. I also wanted to say to those of you who ever used this website in the past, uh, whether you're a buyer or a seller, please share your experiences down below in the comments. I'd love to hear how it went for you because if this is a good website, if it's generally you know received with positive feedback, then I'd like to see it continue growing because that means more people are contributing to the website and in the future we'll have more options to choose from. As you guys saw, some of these categories were really scarce with their, their product selection. Um, there's just not a whole lot going on right now, but if it continues to grow in that direction, then um, it'll be better for everyone, I think. I think of the day, assuming that it's a legit and, and fair website and it, and it works well most of the time. That's gonna do it for now though, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, toss a like before you go. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way and I will see y'all in the next video.